Do you seek online validation by wanting people to like your posts or pictures? Do you gossip or tell tales to make yourself look smarter to impress others? Do you seek validation through compliments and feel upset if you don't get them? Do you dress or behave in a certain way only to fit in? Do you validate your intelligence through your grades? Do you constantly compare yourself to others? Does your work success depend on a promotion? And if you don't get it, do you feel worthless? If your answer is yes, then you are seeking external validation. And I'm going to tell you, you have to stop before you lose your identity. Today, I'm going to tell you different ways to stop seeking validation from others based on my experience. But I want you to know, everyone has their own journey. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Saika, a qualified alima, and today's video is divided in two parts. The first part, I've called it external validation, and the second part, internal validation. And each part has further subcategories. We get judged all the time through our work, education, social skills, family background, and appearance. But you are not just your work, or your education, or your family background or your looks, you are a lot more. What other people say does not determine who you are. They can only affect you if you give them importance. If I am the product of others' thoughts, opinions, and judgments, then who am I? Remember, Rasulullah was judged too. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to tell Quraysh about Al Isra al Mi'raj, he was so scared, he feared to be judged. When we have something to say which is different from everyone else, and they won't agree that it takes a lot of courage to speak up. So how did he deal with it? The key is to find the balance between seeking external validation and internal validation. So how did Rasulullah find that balance? Before I tell you that, I want to point out that to say I don't care about others, it's not true. We do care. We don't want to be bullied or mocked or laughed at or taunted. We want to be liked. We don't want to be excluded. Rasulullah never said, I don't care about others. But that doesn't mean he was constantly seeking their validation and changing himself to please them. Before I tell you what I understood to be the balance between external and self-validation, let me give you some examples of myself when I was a people pleaser. When I was a young girl, I always said to myself, I don't care what others think. But I was lying to myself all that time. When I was young, I was a tomboy, but I only started to dress girly because my friends were all girly and I wanted to fit in. So basically, my lifestyle wasn't my choice. It was dependent on the validation of my social circle. When it came to studies, I did well, so my grades can validate my intelligence. Whenever I did any charity or voluntary work, I needed validation through compliments. If I didn't get the compliments, I felt sad and ignored. And not even once, I questioned myself, where is my validation coming from? And slowly, I was losing my identity. So how did things change for me? Let's get to the first step. For me, my journey of success, without any doubt, 100% started when I started to pray Salah regularly. To attain success, to be strong, we need closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's where our strength comes from. And to attain closeness to Him, we have to pray Salah. Salah is the key to Jannah. So I'm going to assume you all pray Salah and then I'm going to move on to the next step. Because it's this step which gave me the confidence, strength and the wisdom to decide when to listen to other people, when to please them and when to ignore them. My second step is be truthful to yourself. Everyone loves giving us constant feedback and advice and we need to learn to assess what they're saying. What are their goals and intentions? Are they jealous? Are they mocking? Are they just trying to put me down? Is their personality just like this? Or are they genuine? Do they really want good for me? Imam Sharafi said something very beautiful. He said, a person who gives you advice publicly is trying to put you down. And a person who gives you advice in private seeks good for you. We don't want to be in the defensive mode all the time. That's a sign of weakness and it hinders growth. We want to be truthful and it takes courage to be truthful and that's what leads to growth. 
So then the next step is, how do we distinguish truth from falsehood? To understand the truth, we need to seek ilm, knowledge. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a beautiful dua. Rabbi zidni ilm. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. And by knowledge, I don't mean your secular education. I don't mean your degree certificates. No, I mean Islamic education. And within Islamic education, there are so many subjects, you don't need to study them all. I will only recommend two, Tafsir and a hadith. Why just these two? Let's move on to step four. These two subjects will teach you Ma'rifah. Ma'rifah means to know. Who do we want to know? We want to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about our Rabb, our Creator. We want to know about His attributes, His names. As your knowledge increases about your Creator, you will start to understand what does He want from you. And you will begin to ask yourself, is He pleased with me or not? If he is pleased with you, you have his validation. Then what others say becomes invalid if it's not in line with what he wants. For example, if someone makes a comment about your appearance, you will say, Allah has told me in the Quran that he has created mankind in the best of form. So if I have Allah's validation, why do I need this person's validation? This jahil who is laughing, they don't know. They are laughing at the Khaliq, the creator. Or if some racist person is making some racist remarks, you will say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran He created people from different backgrounds and colors so they may know each other. So you have Allah's validation. Why do you care about the validation of someone else? Your values that identify you must be the values Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from you. And you learn these values from the Quran and Sunnah. The moment you become a God pleaser, always seeking his validation, then you will reconnect with your inner self. And that reconnection with your inner self is what's going to give you strength and confidence and wisdom. My fifth step is company. Don't study these subjects on your own. Study them with like-minded people, have mentors. Together you all have the same goal of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will help each other. And at the same time, that means you'll be spending less time with judgmental people and you need a break from them as well. So it's going to be that nice, perfect balance. My last step is set for yourself high goals and objectives. Doesn't matter if you achieve them or not. It's not about the goal. It's about the journey. But this journey is going to help you to focus on a goal. And when you focus it's a goal, then everything else around it becomes trivial. So other people's judgments will become trivial and they will not be the center of your attention. In short, find your Rabb and through him you will find yourself. Don't seek others' validation. Don't seek self-validation. Always seek Allah's validation and that is the balanced approach. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, he tells his angels, you love this person too. The angels, they come on this earth and they tell the people to love you too. So through Allah, we'll find the love of everyone else as well. I hope this was beneficial. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.